Welcome to the 5-7 Podcast. I'm your host, Pri. And today I've got Danny DeRusso on the podcast. And Danny's an uh, old time friend of mine and uh, gives me advice on the podcast. He gives me his own little words of wisdom. And he might be starting a podcast of his own in the future. <laughs> What's going on, Danny? Maybe. Not too much. How about you? Good, man. Good. What are you up to? I had uh, stuck on a play date today with my daughter. She's starting kindergarten on Wednesday. Ah. So a bunch of them just all messaged each other. We had to go to the park to meet. <laughs> it was uh, horrible. Do you guys have like a uh, like a kindergarten uh, like a kindergarten roundup or something like that? Uh, there's a Facebook group that I had to join, and then like on average, I think I get like two or three emails from the teacher, and class hasn't even started yet. Wow. It's been absolutely horrible. <laughs> you? Uh, pretty much the same thing. I've got my daughter starts kindergarten next. No, I'm sorry. I finished first grade next okay. uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And my son has a kindergarten roundup. On They're about 15 months apart. So they're one grade apart. And that starts on Wednesday. Or is it when, it's Wednesday or Thursday. I got to go in. I got to talk to the teacher. He gets the same kindergarten teacher that my daughter did. And she was awesome. So it works out well. And uh, are they in the same school? What's up? Are your kids going to the same school? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be that should be interesting. And my daughter, she she took to uh, she took to to school really really well, man. Much better than I did. Oh really? How would you like? How would you rate like uh, or what's your like opinion on fatherhood so far? Is it is it what you've expected? Is it you know is it is uh, it much that's... different or like what would you say it's like? The second kid definitely changed things. Just trying to plan and just takes that much longer to get out the house. Yeah. Now my son, about eighteen months, so it's a little easier. He can communicate now. Whereas before, like you know, pretty rough. How about you? Getting out of the house, man. It's during the winter time, especially when you go places. You got to put, you know, all their clothes on. I mean, I really appreciate the summer, so you can just, just, just throw their, uh, throw their their chanclas on or whatever, you know, a t-shirt and shorts and that's it. You know, during the winter time, they have like, like 10, uh, like 10 layers. What would you say that you do, uh, to de-stress, you know? I try to once a week, I work out, you know, in the mornings, I try to get up by like five, five thirty and hit the gym. Are you a morning guy? Or I had to do drive. Yeah. It took me forever. Okay. The first probably seven weeks I did nothing at the gym. Like I fell asleep one time and then it just kind of clicked. Um, and then ever since then, I've been uh, like five five thirty. I get up and go. Okay, and it's Monday through. What kind of uh, uh, what kind of lifting do you do? Uh, it's a one day push, one day pull. Okay, that's what I've been doing lately. I like it. Pretty sore afterwards. Okay. Uh, trying to drop fifteen more pounds in the next month. We're going to Disney, so that's my goal. Okay. Yeah, no kidding, man. That's gotta be that's gotta be pretty expensive. Dude, we got to go now because if we go after my son turns two, then we have to pay for him. So that's like the main reason we're going now uh, to get out of the way. Yeah. 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 My wife wanted to go early and I was like, I'm not going to go until they're going to remember it, you know, especially yeah. if I'm going to pay like all that money to get into it, dude. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It's not cheap. What kind of recovery do you do? Uh, I have a, just a protein shake when I get home. That's my breakfast. Mm-hmm. And you don't you don't and have a, you don't have a meal. You just have a protein shake, and then you wait until until lunch. Depending if I have time, like I'll, I'll make eggs, you know, oh. or sometimes I just have like a Greek yogurt. Okay. And then uh, yeah, then I'll wait for lunch. Okay. Are you a night person or a morning person? For you know what, man. Uh, traditionally, I normally like working out at night, but oh, yeah. I'm t- kind of um, I'm t- trying to gonna try and turn my schedule around so that I can do it in the morning. But I'm, t- I yeah. mean, when I was in the army, man, I had to get up early. So like now I'm like, if I don't have to get up early, I, w- I won't do it, you know, but right. it kind of helps because, you know, my kids are going to be going to school and if I can get that workout in, in the morning, that means, you know, if, if I work late, you know, I can come home and kind of just hang out a little bit and not have to worry about working out. But for some reason, man, I've always had a thing for, for working out at night. It's always been like, kind of like my time to work out. You know, like I'll be, yeah. I'll be hanging out and then that, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna do a set push ups, And then, you know, a set of push ups turns into 50 and then it's like, okay, I'm going to do some, some leg raises. The next thing I know I'm doing, you know, lunges down the hallway. Then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go do some sprints outside now. And it turns into like a 40 minute workout, you know? Usually at night I'll have like my second dinner and it's like a big bowl of <laughs> <fruit loops> or- <laughs> 
friend cut in. You know what sucks is like I like to um you know like I'll open up the freezer and there's like Klondike bars there and I'm like oh man I want one of these bad boys really bad. <laughs> I'm sure like early on in the day the rest of it shot like I would just have like four donuts. Right. It's just. <laughs> So cool, man! Did you hear about? Uh, did you hear about Jeffrey Epstein? Yeah, pretty disgusting. You know, you know this guy. I was like, okay, there's going to be a point where this guy is going to be killed. You know, and then sure. you know it, it didn't happen. I'm like, okay, you know, he'd been in jail for for about five days. I'm like, okay, you know, and then it's like two weeks, and it's like okay. And then uh, word starts coming out. They're going to start unfiling files in Florida, and then they're going to they're reopen that case. And then, and then they announced that. Uh, well, before that, they found him laying in his in his uh, in his cell with the marks around his neck. Was that last week when that happened? <sighs> it might have been like two weeks ago or something like that. And then, uh, so it's like okay, may- maybe he tried to kill himself. You know, who knows. So they put him on suicide watch and then they release all this information out on Friday. And then Saturday they say that this guy killed himself and they had talked to people that had been in the, who had, who had been inmates there. And they're like, dude, when you're on suicide watch, there's absolutely no way for you to kill yourself. They put you in a straight jacket. It's like a padded room. Like, like the bed is like attached to the wall. Um, you can't, you know, write anything. The lights, like in the ceiling, there's yeah. no like fixtures. You know, they're just kind of in the in the ceiling. There's like, there's no, there's no way you can hang from anything. And then the sheets are like some kind of like a polyester paper. So is that how he did it? So or do they say there's there's no word, man. There's nothing on it. There's no details on like what happened other than he, other than he killed himself. So well, they said he hanged himself apparently. So words coming out that he was not on suicide watch for that day, and like nobody was watching him that night or something. I heard there was even like missing security footage. I mean, supposedly there's missing security footage. <laughs> I'm not surprised, and you know, some you know to to kind of uh, get the conspiracy theorists going. They're saying that there was a guy in there. They got a report from somebody. He said that um, Epstein that somebody came into his. They they came into his his cell. They took him from his cell at like four fifteen in the morning, and he was in a mm-hmm. wheelchair with uh like like a triage personnel, and then a white van showed up and somebody was like looking out the window. They're like, dude, there's there's no way N- nobody ever leaves this place on the weekends. It's always during weekdays when they release people. It's always during the weekdays. Okay, yeah. so the white van comes and um. And they said that after, like a couple hours later that uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, killed himself. So this guy is thinking to himself, he, he said, he stated, he's like, I think that, I don't think he killed himself. I think he was swapped out for, for somebody. So that... Uh, like every meme that I've seen is like a couple weeks ago, they're like, watch, there's going to be a school shooting or something to distract people. And then we had two of them last yeah. week. Yeah, and then the other day it was like, oh, nobody's gonna be more surprised than Epstein about the suicide, and then you know, the suicide happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I hate, I hate to like, uh, you know, to kind of give the conjecture, the, you know, like give it that kind of attention, but you know, it's just too, it's just too sensational, you know. It's like so many people were expecting something like this to happen. So many people were expecting this guy to either be killed or, you know, somebody kill him in prison or, um, right. or, or, or something, you know, and, and it happened, you know, and this guy, I think the most disappointing part of all is that if this guy truly was running a child sex trafficking ring, mm-hmm. how are we going to know now? Yeah. You know, what happens? How are they? Uh, there's the nobody evidence. to prosecute. So, how do they go forward with with the charges that were placed against him? You know, unlike this this so called uh, child sex trafficking ring that, it, that I mean that you, obviously you've heard about or heard heard conspiracy theorists about, but there's nothing on it right now. Do you think that there's a that there truly is something going on? Do you think that they're they really are trying to hide something? Uh, it could be, you know, 
There's a lot of big names in that book. There are. It was Andrew's book. Yeah. They said, was it yeah. Prince Andrew or something? And uh, yeah. there's a couple senators in there too, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. It's, it just boggles my mind, man, that this stuff is even... I mean, you don't want to think that. And if there is something going on, say like 30 years ago, some, something's going on and they want to they wanna hide. They want to hide what's going on. How hard is it? You know, there's, you know, the news cameras. Nobody's walking around with the camcorders, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's cameras, but they would be yeah, so grainy and, and, and crappy, right. you know, that you wouldn't be able to see anything. Now there's freaking cameras everywhere. There's, you know, we've got cameras on our phones that are, you know that are that are really high speed. Do you think that? Do you think that? Um, like, there's any chance that this guy really was? You know that he really was running something. And do you think that? Um, do you think like the Clintons had anything to do with this guy uh, getting out or or finding his end? I, I want to. I, I like the conspiracies, man. They're really funny. The best one that I saw it was uh, Trump. And his wife and the Clintons, and it was a meme that said like the time the gang planned the murder suicide. It was like making fun of it's always sunny. Yeah, who knows, man? It's hard to say. I think he was definitely involved with that stuff. Yeah, I mean, what was it? Twenty six. I think it was like twenty six trips to twenty six trips to his to his island or something like that. And who knows who else was involved? I mean, it's just I'm, disgusting. I'm wondering if Especially I'm wondering if they could um, if they can investigate, like go to his island and uh, you know just tear the place apart and, and look for stuff. You know, is there like I mean, is that like is that against the it's law? Probably some people that's like cleaning that stuff out, like wiping all the DNA, and <sighs> I think you get the power. And there's you know, oh my gosh, man. Yeah. So yeah, uh, but. Yeah, such a short attention span. It's gonna be forgotten about. Yeah, the that's another thing, dude. Like they're like, okay, this is gonna happen. People are gonna talk about it for, you know, a few days, and then we're gonna uh, the, the, watch. Within the next week, there's probably gonna be something happening in Springfield this week. There was a guy. He was gonna go and shoot up another Walmart, and he was st- he right. was stopped by a concealed carry holder. Stopped him? Yeah. Like he shot no, him? He didn't, he didn't shoot him. He held him at oh. gunpoint. The guy was going to go in there with his weapon, and the guy pulled up, pulled out his pistol, and he's like, don't move. And then the guy just, he was like, okay, you got me. And then he called the police, and then the police came in and arrested him. I didn't see that. I'd have to check that out. Of course. It's nowhere to be, it's it's nowhere on the news, man. You know, I just happened to be, you know, digging through news articles on Friday and you know the story came up, and I was like, "What? What's the date on this?" You know, it was like two hours old. You know, and it was like buried, 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 buried. And the media, you know, obviously the media didn't want to cover it. You know, you don't want to hear about concealed carry carriers. You know, doing the yeah, sure. or or performing a, a good service like that. You know, do you think that, considering you know the way that the the way that the the media is, and they want to kind of have their own you know, like their own agenda. Do you think that they are, or maybe the powers that be are trying to assault the, uh, the, the second amendment? Oh man, that's hard to see. I think it's, I, I think that, you know, a lot of times when you, um, when you start talking about gun control or you start talking about the, 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 the second yeah. amendment, the people, the right. people that you think about, you know, they always show like people walking down the street with, you know, like an M4 strapped around their back, you know, and the majority of people that are concealed carrying, you know, they're, they're not those people, you know, and they're not, right. they're not doing those things. They're not running around. They're not running around, you know, killing people, you know, they're not shooting people like you would think that, that they were, you know, you see a mass shooting. They're like, oh, okay, we need, you know, we need, we need gun changes. We need, re- we need gun reform, but it's like, okay, but what about the, the people that are, okay. Yeah, this sure. This guy wouldn't bought a, wouldn't bought a gun, but they see they see a licensed concealed carry holder because that's essentially who the laws affect. You know they 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 affect the uh, the concealed carry holders. But 
like Walmart now is going to stop carrying violent video games because they say like there's a connection where they're still going to sell guns. So like, do you rem- dude, do you remember when we were kids and Mortal Kombat came out and it was like, it was like crazy. It was yeah. like you could pull people's hearts out, you know, you could do stuff like that. And they were like, oh my God, this is terrible. This is going to, this is going to ruin kids. And, and, you know, we've right. all grown up and you know what? You don't see 30, 35 year old people running around shooting up, uh, doing mass shootings, you know? And, but you do see 20 year olds trying to do this stuff, you know, I think it's social media, man. Like growing up, we didn't have social media besides Columbine. Like what other mass shootings did we have? There was well, Columbine was the, was, was the big one. I think that there, there were smaller ones. There were smaller ones, yeah. but, uh, well, how many, how many kids died? Wasn't there like 20, 25? Yeah. Something like that. But after that, I mean, in the last like five or six years, man, like the rise of social media, there's definitely a rise in school shootings and mass shootings. Do you think that maybe kids are trying to like trying to create the sensationalism over it? Oh yeah, they want their fifteen minutes. I say ban social media instead of banning violent video games. Yeah, but do you think that that's a? uh, Do you think that that's like maybe a, like a personality disorder or something, or maybe it's like a, it's a, uh, mental health thing. I, mean, I hate to go down oh. the, I hate to go down the, the, you know, the safe, safe way and say, Hey, it's a mental health thing, but you know, maybe some people are just, they're just jacked up. Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe it's like, okay, this guy's uh he, he's not a good guy. You know, he's never been a good guy. He's always been crazy or he's always been weird. You know, why does it, like, why does it always have to be a, you know, it's like, Oh, this, he's on, um, he's on all kinds of drugs you know or he's got mental health problems or he's on some kind of he's abusing oxycontin or 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 something like that why did why can't it just be you know what the guy just made bad choices and he needs to take responsibility for those actions yeah i think the media creates a narrative people respond to it i read i read that uh when was it what was the article man i'm trying to remember but it was Oh, it was two different things. It was for the shooting in San Francisco. On the LA Times, they said that that uh, he was shooting people and someone asked the guy and he was like, they're like, why are you doing this? He's like, it's because I'm really, really angry. And he just kept shooting people. And then on CNN, they had another report and they said, uh-huh. they said that somebody asked him why he was doing it and they said he was completely calm with no signs of agitation so it's like what is it here you know th- th- this is this is the same the same story but we've got two different reports here is is it bad journalism number one or are they telling two different stories to to two different sure. uh maybe two different sides nah, i think they're appealing to their audience you know whether it's cnn or fox news they have that narrative that they're trying to keep up with yeah. To be honest with you, because all the politics, like I've unfollowed so many different pages and stuff like that, and Facebook's pretty horrible for that, especially at the election coming up. <laughs> yeah, and it's in it's in full swing, dude. Full swing. I, I was on Facebook for four years, and then I happened to get back on right before the last election, not realizing it. Like Facebook had changed so much in that time, and it was just like so much political stuff, just people fighting, you know. How would you say? Like, how like what were the main changes from when you first saw it and to, to when you came back? Dude, just the political. Like everybody's, you can post something like happy. Like I'm on different pages, like for my town and different stuff like that. And somebody could post something positive, and like no matter what, like somebody will find something negative to say or to argue about, like in the comments section. Do you think people are just trying That's to my- just trying to tear other people down? Yeah, yeah, that's a big part of it. That's why I prefer Instagram, to be honest with you. And like, Facebook's cool because I've been able to reconnect with some friends and family, but yeah, so I can't get much of that on Instagram. Yeah, I got a lot of old army buddies that I that I um you know I see what they're doing on on Facebook, and that's pretty cool. And even to be honest with you, dude, I think um a lot of people who comment on Facebook sometimes, you know, they're like they're like so out there. Do you know what I mean? It's like, whoa, dude. You know, and you can definitely tell even the age difference of people that you're talking to on Facebook compared to Instagram. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that when I talk to people on Facebook, they're normally um, somewhat, I don't know, maybe 35 and older. And right. then on Instagram, you know, I asked, you know, I asked this one kid, I'm like, hey, are you, a, are, are you a, uh, are you a podcast listener? He goes, no, I'm not really into it. You know, I'm, I'm 17. I was like, 
never mind. <laughs> He's like, what, do you think that I'm not, I wouldn't be into podcast? Right. I'm like, dude, you're not going to be into a podcast that's about uh, interviews and, and current events, dude. <laughs> but, um, dude, I logged in MySpace like maybe about eight months ago, and I haven't been in that in like nine years. And like most of that was deleted, but like it was kind of cool just to see some of the old pictures that were still there. Oh, really? I was like, it was such a happier thing. Like nobody was fighting on MySpace. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, man. it's kind of weird, man. Like it seemed like MySpace. Everyone was just trying to see what everybody else is doing, see their pictures, and and uh, comment, and then people getting caught up in getting caught up yeah. in uh, doing dirt and stuff like that. And then Facebook came along. Yeah, I didn't get on Facebook right away because when it first started, you had to have a college email, and I didn't go to college right after high school. So I was like, screw that, I'm sticking up MySpace. I mean, this was like an 05. Yeah. And like, towards the end of college, I got on Facebook. And like, so then I was off of it for like four or five years, and it was great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Facebook, I thought was I thought it was pretty cool for a while, man. But like you said, dude, I, I think like maybe uh, a few years ago, uh, it, really, it really, I would say definitely around the the Clinton, the Clinton, um, Trump, uh, mm -hmm. that, that when, when that started, when, when that political cycle started, that's when everything right. went to com went to hell, like in a handbasket. Right. It was crazy. It was, it just seemed like, it just seemed like people changed too. You know, it was like, Oh yeah. One, one, one side going for Trump, the other side going for, for Hillary. And, anybody who had any different type of 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 opinion towards it you know it was like you were a complete ass you know and the people i mean it, it ruined friendships man you know yeah. Yeah. yeah i had people that were like if if you are if you if you support any of trump's policies you're dead to me you know it's like it's like that after everything it's like that and i could I honestly care less if somebody has a different political opinion than I do. At the end of the day, it's my opinion. Like, exactly. Not gonna, you know? I believe you. Think any more or less of you. Like, life's short, man. Who cares? Why do you think people, why do you think people nowadays, man, they have like this, this, um, this thing where it's either you're with me or you're against me type of an attitude? It's a weird mentality. It is. It's, it's yeah. like, okay, you, you completely disagree with my opinion and, because of that, we can have no kind of relationship anymore. Like, what do you think? Nobody, about that? Like, nobody sees the gray area, oh, black or white, you know? I, like I said, I honestly just don't even waste time anymore. Like, especially with the election coming up, like, I'm going to start unfollowing a decent amount of friends and family. <laughs> I also unfollow them after the election and it dies down. <laughs> Well, that's cool, man. So, what do you uh, what do you tip? What else do you typically do to um, to distress? Do you do you like to read? Do you um, do you do you play video games? You know, do you go for walks? Like, what do you do? I try like on my lunch break if I have nothing going on, I'll go for a walk and just kind of just clear, clears my head, helps me to think. And at least like one or two nights a week after the kids and the wife go to sleep, like I try to just like watch an old movie and just relax. And, like that's my me time. Uh, and ever since that, like that helps a lot. So when you post your, um, just to let everybody know on on uh, Danny's Instagram, he'll usually post like some awesome movie from like the eighties or nineties that he's watching. You know, one week it could be Cobra. You know, the next week it's yeah. The Rock. You know, or something. That's really cool. So how do you like? How do you pick what you're gonna watch? Dude, like I usually just go like in my. I have all my DVDs in the closet because my kids kind of took over my man cave. And just, it's usually something from the 80s or the 90s, do like a good comedy or a good action movie. Like, I watched The Rock last Friday, and it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is. But there was like the sweet thing from like the mid-80s to the mid to late 90s where just movies were good. Yeah, yeah. Do you, um, do you read it all? Yeah, I try to. Uh, not as much. As, it's, it's been busy lately, but not as much. But usually I try to keep a book next to my bed. Or even when I go for a walk on my lunch break, like I'll have a book with me just to kind of kill two birds with one stone. Sometimes. What kind of uh, what kind of books do you like to read? Dude, anything, fiction, nonfiction, no comics. How about you? Uh, you know, what, man, I like I like reading uh, I like reading fiction because I kind of want to be taken out of my my world a bit, and I want to be taken into like some kind of make believe place where I can kind of let go of everything that's on my mind and, 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 and get engrossed into a story 
um, I, I, I normally go towards fiction, but, but then I also go through like a, um, you know, like, oh, okay, this, you know, David Goggins, this looks like a great, like a great, yeah, like a great book to read. And you're like this, this, this looks great or, or something like that. You know, I do like to, I do like to dive into those. Did you, did you read it? Yeah. It made me do cardio again. Like I had stopped doing cardio for years. And uh, it made me do cardio. Earlier this year, I had to drop about 20 pounds for my insurance because it's based, it's like an incentive medical insurance. Uh, so if I had put on some weight last year. So if I didn't drop the weight, our insurance would have went up 300 bucks a month. Really? And uh, yeah. And like, it was either that or I would have to take like a online health assessment. And I told my wife, I was like, I'm not going to do that. And then like halfway through, like I wasn't really losing weight. And I was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. And she wasn't really paying attention. So I thought like I was still able to do it and she canceled it. It's a long story, but like I basically put more weight on like halfway through. (laughs) So two days uh, at the gym, which was nuts because like I'd wake up at like 5 a.m., work out, go to work all day hang out with the kids and then go back to the gym at like eight. But I was able to do it. Like I literally went in at like, I was like one pound over, like right where I needed to be like for that last, for the weigh-in. And that was back in May. And like over summer, I kind of slacked a little bit, but now like I said, I'm trying to drop 15 pounds before October. So do you have to weigh, do it uh, weigh in twice once in May and once in October? Oh no, October is just for the vacation. Like I just want to just drop the weight, but yeah, it's once a year. It's a yearly biometric screening and physical. So do you, um, so how exactly does this work? Do you, do you have to enroll in it or, or are they like, uh, like, is there like a plan where you enroll in this and then they, they manage your, your rates by your physical fitness or is like, how does it work? Exactly. like that. So like, as long as they check everything, like blood work, uh, BMI, uh, blood sugar and all that, as long as you say like where you should be for your age and your height, your insurance stays really cheap. But if you get out of it, then it shoots up. No kidding, three hundred bucks a month—that's unbelievable. The car payment, like yeah. And I problem until like the last two years when my wife was pregnant. The last time I just put on a bunch of weight. Yeah, so. yeah you can't uh, you can't enforce fitness standards when she's pregnant. <laughs> and, exactly. And I just I like food, man. What can I say? Yeah. You know, if I'm angry, I eat. If I'm happy, I eat. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be like that with drinking, dude. I was happy. I'm like, man, I'm going to throw some back. I'm like, if I'm in a bad mood, I'm going to throw some back. (laughs) That's why the white clothes are so nice, dude. Like, I wake up the next day. You know, it's kind of funny, dude. Like, as a guy, you know, it's like, yeah. Like, I had white cloth for the first time the other day. And I'm like, oh, actually, I tried it. I tried it at, um, I tried it at Mike's. And, um. He's like, yeah, you gotta try one of these. And I looked at the can, dude. There's like nothing in them. It's like, it's like seltzer water, a little, fl- a, a little yeah. flavoring, and alcohol. I'm like, this is perfect. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I resisted it for a couple months, and then I started drinking them, and not like secretly. And then now, I'm like, I'm, I'm open about it. Dude. Yeah, well, it, it's about- gonna be out on the podcast now, man. I'm a freaking, I'm not a closet yeah. freaking uh, white claw drinker anymore. The claw. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good, man. What else you got going on, Maybe dude? That's about it, man. Like, I got to start coaching soccer next week for my daughter. So that should be fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got volunteered to coach. So I plan on just making them run suicides, blasting some DMX and Tupac for practices and games and getting them pumped. There we go. There we go. I'm sure yeah. they'll appreciate it. I'm sure those monster parents would really appreciate it. Yeah. That. You know, it's kind of funny. If you really think about, like, maybe, like, our parents, you know, they play, like, uh, you know, like classic rock or something, you know, more than a feeling. And then now our kids are going to be listening to like gangster rap and stuff. It's like, man, this is what we listen to, you know? Yeah, exactly. I told my wife, yeah, I'm like, what, what music did you listen to? Like when you were in seventh grade and she was like, Oh, you know, she's like, I listened to some Britney Spears, you know, this and this and this and this. She's like, what did you listen to? I'm like, I, I, I remember buying the all eyes on me CD when I was in seventh grade. It was seventh grade or eighth grade. And uh, yeah. I think back on it now, man, I'm like, geez, dude, I was a seventh grader listening to hardcore gangster rap. <laughs> like my parents had like no idea, you know, that like, I had no idea what I was listening to, you know. I was, uh, when did that first Bone Thugs and Harmony CD come up, came out? That was like. Is that the uh, one like, with the crossroads on it? That was like the first big one. But I remember having that 
tape and that was like my first rap tape. And I was probably like in third grade maybe when they came out. And, like my mom got <laughs> Wow. But like where it started and then like I said right after that was like Tupac and then after that DMX yeah. was a big one. Yeah, DMX was was real well when I got out of high school that's when he was getting really well no no no. I was in high school he was starting to get really big. <laughs> Yeah, I was like sixth, seventh grade when he really hit. Wow, now you're taking me back, dude. Dude, but all that's on my workout playlist. Like it gets me through a workout. Is it? Oh yeah, dude, for sure. How do you? How do you? Uh, like, what do you change in your in your workout playlist? Like, how do you choose the music? My workout play like I have separate playlists for different things. Like my kids have a playlist in the car. Like I have a playlist that's just like uh, like a road trip playlist, or it's just kind of like more like acoustic stuff. But as far as my workout, like, it's kind of like a dumpster. Like, I just literally will put, like, anything new on there, just a little bit of everything. And it's nice because there's, like, so much music. I think on my workout playlist, there's, like, 2,000 songs. So, like, I really never hear the same song twice. Wow. Yeah. I have, a, How about I you? have like, <laughs> like, if I'm doing, like, weights, I have, like, eight songs on there right now. <laughs> I've got, like, I've got, like, Breathing from Tupac. I've got Ringer from Eminem. And I've got okay. some um, some Ice Cube on there, you know. And then uh, for running, I listen to like like more trance. So it's like okay. uh, so that I can kind of because trance songs are normally really l- much longer, you know. Like they hit like the seven minute mark a lot. So I'll have like a few of those on. So like I'm kind of like just trying to maybe I wouldn't say run with the beat, but I kind of let the music kind of take me away a little bit so that I'm not focusing right. on how much it sucks running, you know, and just like kind of getting into it and getting into that, getting into that one, that one spot in your run. You know how it's like when you first start, you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And then you get into the middle of it. You're like, Hey, you know what? I got a pretty good pace going today. You know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And then you get to the end and like that kind of euphoria kind of comes over you a little bit. You're like, you're just sweating buckets, you know? And you're like, man, I was, I feel freaking fantastic right now. You know? Like I like to, oh. I like to get through that first, that first part of it. Uh, like the trance kind of helps me get out of that. Right. There's a guy at my gym. Like every morning, he leaves as I'm getting in there, but he does cardio and he wears like one of those sweatsuits. It's like a garbage bag. Yeah. But he'll like squeeze it out on the bench, and it's like the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Like I want to say something to him, but oh man, it's just disgusting. Does, does he do it outside? No, dude, like on the bench in the locker room. On the like bench just, like, in right the locker there. room. So, okay, so yeah. say like the lockers are like right there. He'll just stand there and squeeze it out right there. And he's got like a puddle of or sweat, like he's trailing in, like just walking from, you know, whatever the treadmill or the stairmaster. Oh my gosh, dude. I would, I would put that guy on fucking notice right there, dude. I'd be like, hey, man. Oh, that's brutal, dude. Absolute pure brutality right there. You know, there's some <laughs> sick dudes who, who go into the gym, dude. That's why I don't like working out in gyms. To be honest, yeah, me like, too. I'd man. love for reasons like that. Yeah, and it always seems like the old guys are always like the the guys with no reservations. You know, they're they're walking around naked. You know, like yeah, fuck it. You know, <laughs> dude, they're seventy years old. I mean, good for them. Yeah, dude, I remember playing grade school basketball, like third, fourth grade, and we'd go at the Whiting Community Center. And we would go downstairs, like in the locker room. And there would just be old, naked dudes everywhere. And like, we were like eye level with them because we were, you know, fourth grades. So we were shorter and like scarred me for life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! What a freaking terrible story about the gym, dude. Now people aren't going to want to go to the gym. <laughs> what gym do you go to? Planet Fitness. Oh, okay. Is it true that yeah. they don't allow you to lift heavy weights there? It's stupid, dude. Like, you can't have a water, like a gallon of water. It's a judgment free zone. Like, it's a horrible gym, but it is pretty cheap. So it's, and you can go to any of them, which is nice. So that's why I go there. What, what, they, what do you mean by like, yeah. like judgment free zone? They don't have a scale, which I think is horrible because they don't want people judging you. Uh-uh. But like, how are you going to measure your fitness, you know, and your progress? Yeah. Yeah. I don't and, know. You know, too, I think that they're like, essentially, I think people have a hard time, uh, I, mean, I I wouldn't say like say you or me go to the gym it's like whatever you know but I think people that are looking to get into fitness I think have a little hump to get over and right, right. and I and I think that getting over that hump is how people don't stick with it and they kind of 
fall back off of right. fall back off and go onto the wagon. Do you um do you think that gyms do that on purpose? Do you think that they make it like a like a type of environment where uh, you know people may, might feel uncomfortable so that they pay to get into that membership but not come? They signed that contract for that year, so they got them anyway. I mean, regardless. Yeah. But like Planet Fitness, they also give you free pizza once a month and free bagels. <laughs> so it's like they're not really about it. they give you free pizza and free bagels once a month. It's like the first Monday night, and then the first Tuesday morning, it's free bagels from Panera. No wonder, but no wonder it's a judgment free zone because they're trying to load everybody up with uh, with carbs. And like I said, dude, like there would just be people that are just sitting eating and like having a party instead of working out. Oh really? But I think you need a scale on there regardless, just so you can track your progress and see where you're at. I mean, yeah, I'm a I'm not really a scale guy. I'm more of like a you know, how many laps did you do today type of guy, and how fast did you do it? You know, I think that you kind of, I think your weight will fall in line once you once you uh, worry about your your um your fitness level. So say for instance, you know, like say like your insurance. You know, say you come up overweight on the on on the scale but your but your uh your body fat is lower than what it's supposed to be the messed up part is like for that thing to actually measure your body fat and like the right way to do it is they get the calibers and they like pinch you all over yeah. and they figure out your body fat the doctor that i went to doesn't do that they just use the body uh weight body fat scales which those can be off by points either way so like going into it i was like man i could be really screwed or i can it could work out the other way for me and get those five points so it was like pretty frustrating. Wow, considering that there's yeah. so much air with those things, it makes you kind of wonder why exactly. they use them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it can go five. five I mean, what's five percentage? I mean, dude, that could be another ten pounds right there easily, depending on the person. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There could be somebody else who's been working their ass off trying to get, trying to get it done, yeah. you know, and then they they come up, you know, that little bit short, and that little bit short could be the reason why they're like, you know what, whatever, I'm never going to do this again, anyways. Yeah, so like I took the formula, like I figured out where I needed to be if it was accurate, mm-hmm. and I came in like one pound under that even just to be safe that morning. But like I didn't really eat like those last two days leading up to it, just like a little bit. You know, like I said, I'd have my breakfast and just basically drink black coffee and water. Wow! But when I left the way in that morning, dude, like I went to White Castle and got like two big breakfast sandwiches. Dude. Like it was like the greatest thing ever because I had beat the beat the scale. And I was gonna have to spend an extra three hundred bucks a month. Did it go through you, dude? It was like the greatest breakfast I ever had in my life, <laughs> just because I like I was leading up to it. <laughs> oh man, that's funny, dude. All right, man. Well, we're gonna call it a day uh, for that, dude. Thank you for coming on the podcast, dude. I really appreciate it. Anytime. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely do this again. So, anybody out there, uh, if you want to follow Danny, Danny, where you at, man? Just my name, Daniel DeRusso, on Instagram. And I might be deleting Facebook, so just stick to Instagram. Oh, really? Yeah, or at least deactivating it until after the election. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. So if you want to uh, get up to the podcast and send in some questions, uh, get at me, MJP57. No, no, it's MJP at 57podcast.com. Check us out on YouTube, and we're everywhere on all podcast apps. That's it for today, guys. This is Pre out. Mm-hmm.